Happy Friday, ladies. Figured I'd go live here tonight. See if anybody's going to drop in. We're still navigating the room thing. I'm still learning. So the more I do of these, just like I'm doing my lives, the more that we do those things that are uncomfortable and we don't know how to do them, then we build skills and we get better at things that we may be uncomfortable about. Hi, Melissa. Uh, or that we're afraid of or we don't know how to do. And you know what? I think women are just so supportive of one another and just allow, you know, us to be silly if we don't do something right or whatever. Like we're very supportive of one another. And I love that. You know, you could be driving along and then you miss your exit and it's like you laugh and then you turn back around and you get to where you're going or, you know, you end up learning together, like how to do something, change a flat tire or whatever. I just think that there's just such great camaraderie with women when you're navigating singledom and, you know, um, <laughs> it's really good to laugh at yourself and, you know, don't take your life so seriously. Like why, why sometimes, you know, do we have to be perfect or get things right? And I think that can kind of get in the way, you know, as we get older, like I think as we get older, life gets less perfect and we have all this skill to navigate all these difficult situations and we can do hard stuff. And I think that's the beauty of getting older is we have much more experience and wisdom and awareness about different things. And so, you know, give up being scared, give up being fearful, give up being angry or mad and just go with the flow. Um, I guess I'm just really going with the flow lately. And right now I have seven days in a wake up until I'm in Texas. So uh, I don't really have wine glasses because those are all packed up. So I'm drinking some wine out of my uh, teacup here. So cheers if anybody's joining me with a glass of wine. And yeah, so it's been an interesting week. Um, today I just went and got my um, eyebrows done, some microblading here. And... If you are a woman over 40, I just want to give you a little PSA, a public service announcement that go get your eyebrows done. It really does give you about five to eight years looking younger, like your eyebrows really frame your eyes. And so as we get older, you know, we start losing our eyebrows and this is my third time getting microblading so they were done today they actually came out my my lady jennifer she did a really great job i'm gonna miss her she does shading and she does a lot of uh she's just amazing so i'm gonna miss her but i'm sure i'll find somebody else but if you've never done microblading it's uh it's actually you know, I've gotten about a year and a half out of it, close to two years out of each application. And it cost me $250. And for me not to have to do eyebrows in the morning, that is so worth it. And if you haven't done that before, you know, you make an appointment and then you go in and for about the first 10 minutes, they go ahead and put numbing cream on there and get it all numbed up. And, and after the numbing cream is all taken off, then they go ahead and shape your brows. And there's like this kind of thread that they use and they get it all perfect. And then they ask you, hey, is this, you know, do you like this design, this outline that I'm going to do? And then you approve it. And then she matches your your hair color, you know, with, uh, with the different um, colors there. So... And then she goes to town, and this was a new one that it had some kind of um, mechanism to it. In the past, it's all been hand done, except for the shading. And this time, there it made it really uh, nice. It made it very fast. I think uh, last time it took like an hour and a half when it was done manually. And now with this advancement of a machine that she was doing in her pen, that it was all mechanized and all automated. So that was it went really fast. So, uh, and then a few times you get up to look in the mirror to make sure she got everything. And um, it was kind of funny. There was this one spot, I think it was in this, this, uh, eyebrow here that there was like just this, this splotch 
And I'm like, she already had touched it up. You know, when I looked in the mirror, I'm like, can you do that, that one spot? And it turns out it was a um, white hair that was in my eyebrow. And so she plucked it and then we were all good to go. So today is going to be really good. And the next couple of days, they're going to be kind of weird. So they'll be really bright tomorrow. And um, for anybody who does do your eyebrows, the really important thing about that is it's really all about the, the self-care plan, how you take care of them the first week that will help dictate how long that you actually have the, the dye in your eyebrows. And um, if you take fastidious care, like all of the care that you're given, the ointment and how you wash it and then how you sleep at night, you can get a longer duration out of it. And you do have to be careful when you take a shower because that'll open your pores up and, you know, depending on how much steam goes in can really impact how long this session will last. So that's kind of my thing. And you'll be able to see here over the next week when I go live how that's all going to work. But today they're looking really cool. And again, we did the PSA for having how well that as you get over 40, it's something you do need to do. And yeah, so a big win for me this week was I got my car serviced. Um, the dealership was having a shortage of mechanics. And so I was able to score a local mechanic, had some openings, and they've been seeing more Volvos. And so I was able to get that done today. So I got to meet a, a couple young ladies that... Um, kind of pick you up, you bring your car there and then they drop you off at your place and come back. And so that was nice, really nice people. And I'm glad to support local businesses that's here. And yeah, so this week was very interesting for me. Earlier in the week, I think it was last week that I posted a little self-love 365 tip. And that was about stop being the nice girl, stop being the nice lady and start being a bitch. And you know, that kind of that title kind of makes me laugh. And if you know me, and I think you ladies are getting to know me, I'm really not a Karen. And I do like to be professional. And I do, I'm starting to stand up for myself and speak my truth. And so that whole video title kind of made me laugh out loud because it feels like I'm being like this big bitch and this Karen because I'm speaking out. And, you know, really, you know, when I've talked to other people it, and who've been near me when I am speaking my truth, although I feel like I'm being a bitch, I'm actually being very professional and personable and being uh, assertive and setting my boundaries and communicating those things. And so as you move forward in learning and growing and developing tools, like then it becomes a new normal. And so for me right now, speaking up for my for myself and really setting boundaries and being grounded in the type of woman that I'm becoming and, you know, gaining more confidence. And it feels like I'm being the bitch, but I'm not really. It's just it's just for my perspective that I haven't spoken up before. And I have, but in a in a completely and always in my life, you know, and I think in my marriage, I tried to speak up, but then people weren't my husband wasn't listening. And so over time, you know, it just went on deaf ears. And now the people that I'm in relationship with and working with and in community with, like, I'm not going to be that codependent person anymore. And so I'm developing new skill sets. Um, you know, if that's something that you're doing in your life, like, how is that manifested? Does it feel like you're being a bitch or a Karen? Or is it feeling like more at home? And so I'm just curious, drop those in the comments. And I posted that video on YouTube. And I got a really interesting comment by a man who happened to watch that and he said to me good luck you're going to be single for the rest of your life and you know we are going to have people we're going to have friends or family or even potential partners that won't be comfortable with that 
And you know what? That is purely okay. That's a type of man, if he's not okay with me speaking my truth and setting boundaries and being assertive to get my needs met and for me to speak up, then I don't want to be in relationship with that type of man. And I found that to be very interesting that he would post that. And I think that's, you know, where we're up against ladies when we're dating new partners or, you know, uh, going with new friends or inner circle or whatever, is that some people are just not going to be used to, to having another person speak up about or set a boundary or communicate effectively. They may not have had the opportunity to build skills with people who are aligned with their truth and who are aligned with themselves and and building skill in speaking their truth. So they may not have ever been able to build skill around listening to others set a boundary. And I want to be with those people if they are willing to learn and communicate and be receptive But if someone's going to shut me down for speaking my truth, then that's somebody that I don't want to be in relationship with. So I'm just curious if that's happened to you when you've started to speak your truth and if there were other people trying to reset. So that's an interesting interesting comment that I got on YouTube. And this week I have talked to two or three other men to get a different viewpoint and there was that one comment from that one gentle, that one guy on YouTube. And the two other men that I shared that whole story with, they were like, yeah, I want to be around women who speak their truth and set boundaries. And, you know, that's, that's the realness of being re- in relationship with others that you can speak up and share and stay connected and be available, responsive and engaged And, you know, so for that one guy who's like, well, good luck and be single for the rest of your life versus these other two gentlemen who were like, yeah, you know, I expect that when I'm in relationship. And both of these men have done quite a bit of personal development work. So that may be another factor in relationship to who who we might be dating is, you know, the level of their personal development. And I found that to be quite interesting. And the other thing that comes up for me when I'm speaking, when, you know, you start being a different person, when you are evolving and growing and being assertive and setting boundaries and communicating and being aligned with who you are, that that tendency will also end up being a growth factor for other people that you may have been in relationship with and now you're you're you haven't seen them in a while and then all of a sudden you show up as the new and improved Denise or the new and improved woman in your inner circle or family or whatever and it's always curious to me to see how people react with the new and improved version And, you know, there's a lot of ways, you know, one of them is that it can be very triggering. It can be very triggering for the other person if they're not used to having people who are being assertive, setting boundaries and communicating. And, you know, I I feel that because I do, I'm in my church group and I am around a bunch of people that because I am speaking my truth, setting boundaries and communicating and being assertive about my needs and wants, that that has been triggering for other men. And I have seen that happen in different groups and have had antagonistic behavior back towards me. And so it's another learning cycle for how to handle when people are triggered themselves because of you doing your personal development work. And so that's another whole layer. You start doing your, you are doing your personal development work, but yet for others, it's a triggering event. And then how are you going to handle that? So you have to be prepared for that. And I believe that some of us in different circles will be change agents for other people to work through their issues or to 
help them with awareness around new behaviors. And so you can see some bad behaviors when you yourself are starting to show up in a fully embodied, more powerful, more confident, more assertive, more communicative way than what you've ever been before. So that is a caution that it's not always well received. And I have been on the receiving end of that and am working skills in how to handle that as well. So just wanted to share that. And this week I did share that um, there was some really big like kind of rage and anger that was coming in for me. And I have the opportunity to go to a rage cage. And, you know, I really do believe it's good to get in touch with your anger. And, you know, contrary to what other mental health professionals and maybe even society that says, you know, you shouldn't really, you should tamp down that, that anger that you have. And, you know, in, in the circle of the women that I coach and in, and am in relationship with, I would have to say that a good 60% of the women don't feel comfortable with the emotion of anger. And because they don't feel comfortable with the emotion of anger, and that was including myself, that has kept us in dysfunctional relationships for a lot longer than we would have had if we had had a connection with anger. And so I think that there's some great ways to connect with that anger. And one of them is going to a local uh, rage cage. And in Vancouver, Washington, there is this uh, company called Outraged. And they have like three rooms that are there and they're concrete and they have a wooden spool in the middle. And part of your package, and you know, I'm sure different groups have different items, but for this, for a 30 minute session, I got a 35 minute session and it had... 12 wine bottles. And then I also had a whole bunch of like dishes and plates and they had different feel to them. Like glasses are that shatter really quickly, but a wine bottle, you really have to throw it on the ground in order to get it to break. And then there were dishes and um, a picture frame that was really cool. And then I also purchased and I really highly recommend getting a keyboard. I think a keyboard was like $4. And I also got a printer. And those are great to smash up because usually you have some glass, but it's something very sturdy that you can just wail on. And there's all different types of bats and other banging. There's hammers and a um, crowbar And you also had another punching bag that was there. And I think it's really important to be in a position to get in touch with your anger in a space where you're there by yourself just to really feel it and be in a safe way. And the ladies there were really awesome. There was two young young ladies, Lily and Shannon, that were there. And just really supportive about people getting in touch with their anger, that it is okay. And, you know, to do it in a way that's constructive and active and one where you can get in touch with that anger. And I think for me, just thinking about, I've been in the Pacific Northwest for 24 plus years and I'm closing a lot of doors. I am, you know, leaving this area And it doesn't surprise me that I've had some roots to some, the marriage and the marital home and um, just the, the healing cycle that's here and the different people who were part of my life, who aren't part of my life anymore and saying goodbye to um, friends and different people, my spiritual community and my church community and all of that. So it's kind of brought up more anger, I guess, which is surprising, but there isn't a lot of sadness. It's a lot of processing. I'm really pretty okay with moving to Texas 
and getting a new life and starting a new reality. And, you know, uh, the stress of the move has been, you know, a lot of it was just getting all the plans in place. And now that it's happening, uh, next week is when the big action happens. Um, you know, I'm not stressed out about it. It's, you know, it's all going to unfold and my car is going to get picked up on Wednesday uh, Wednesday, they're going to drop the pod. I'm going to have that um, through Saturday. I have an appointment at the vet to get Kitty Cat his final uh, wellness check. And I've got the two guys. There's these great guys that have helped me a few times move some furniture and different things. And uh, so him and his brother are showing up on Thursday to load the pod. And yeah, and then Friday... I've got my last hair appointment with my gal, getting all prettied up for my move. And then Saturday, um, I'm off to to Texas to fly out. So I've got a noon flight, and Kitty Cat will have his first flight. And yeah, I'll be sleeping in Texas on the last day of September. And I haven't, haven't actually, I'm looking at the moon now. It's probably going to be a full moon here. I'll hit, I'll hit the first full moon in Texas. So I'm excited about that. The weather seems to be cooling off. And I'm ready. I'm ready for this next cycle. Um, I'm just curious if any ladies are going through a transition in their life. You know, drop it in the comments. Or um, I'm also thinking about some new topics for conversation for ladies night. And I was just packing up my makeup here. And as a nutritional therapist and a personal trainer, I kind of have a different viewpoint about some of the products that I use in beauty care, especially for the 40 plus woman. And so I think that could be a really great topic of conversation for next Friday is to share some of the beauty products that I feel are natural and are a little bit different than most uh, products that you might buy in the um, beauty care supply stores. And they have different components that are based on a nutritional factor. So a lot of amino acids, which would be great for proteins that are great for your skin, and different ways. And, you know, again, I look at price. I also look at how effective it is and how it's going to work with your skin and um, both a combination of internal things that you take orally to help the inside of your body to be able to help with the collagen and the skin and the elast elasticity and also products too that you can use externally to put underneath your eye area and use as a um, overall skincare product. So I will put up a meeting for that one that's going to be next Friday. That'll be on the 29th of September. I'll go ahead and put a uh, meeting notice up there for next Friday to talk about natural skincare products that um, you can use and buy um, both in a regular store and just review the, the positives and the negatives about all of those products because I think there are pluses and minuses to everything that you use and you should be educated about what you're using on your face and why and you know gain more and more knowledge on all of that. So Melissa, I've enjoyed talking with you tonight and How's how's things in Texas? How's the weather in Texas? I'll have to come down and uh, do a wine tour. And um, I'm really excited to really get to know the difference in taste of wines from the Willamette Valley that's here and also what's in Texas. So, yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to go live tonight, talk a little bit about some things that were on my plate. And again, the winds is just continuing to be okay with closed doors. That my life, that there's a lot of closed doors. God is closing doors and shifting things. And um, I have to say, this is the first time in my life that I don't really have a plan. 
and I don't have uh, employment in Texas. I have a Airbnb for the first 30 days. Um, you know, I don't have an apartment. My car is going to get there. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how God's going to unfurl this next book of life for me in Texas. So again, if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to talk about, I always am going to talk on these uh, lives on Friday um, about wins and how we can get more people on here to, to uh, connect. And again, I know the kids are getting back to school and there's new routines and that sort of thing, but the whole gist around going live on Friday night is in the effort um, in the ability to connect around ladies who may not have uh, people to connect with so we can have this connection that happens virtually. And it is hard to navigate single life when you're a single lady and there's not too many of us and we're all in different corners of the world. So just wanted to create uh, an open and safe place for ladies to connect around talking about being single, the struggle with healing after divorce, separation, narcissistic abuse, struggles you may be going through, um, if you're looking for advice or feedback, and just sharing wins and sharing in how we can move forward and being single and just connect with one another. Because I think it's really hard sometimes when you have a lot of people that are divorced, that they're, that they're coupled, and they mean really well. I mean, these, these uh, couples really do have a heart for single people, but they're not navigating the same thing that we're navigating. And they do a wonderful job of support, but they're not single. They're married. And, you know, they're living in a home or they've been married for 20 plus years. And I love their heart for divorced and single people, but they're not navigating the same type of walk. So I just wanted to create an open space for ladies to connect and support one another and just make sure that there's a place where nobody feels alone. So that's what Friday nights are going to be like. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed my time tonight. And I look forward to connecting with you again next week to continue the conversation about just stabilizing, building, and expanding that, you know, that we can stabilize our life, that we can build upon our life, and that we can expand our life. And those are kind of the three phases that... Um, can be very helpful in walking a path of singledom after divorce, separation, or narcissistic abuse. So that's a little teaser for next week. It's just about stabilizing, building, and expansion, and a conversation next week around that topic. So I hope you ladies have a really good night, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.